Hi, my name is Vanessa and I'm an alcoholic. My sobriety date's October 8th, 2017. Thanks for watching this video. It's been a while. Primarily, one, the pandemic um, took out a lot of alcoholics and addicts. Um, a lot of people relapsed and, of course, overdoses and deaths like skyrocketed. A lot of alcoholics um, depends in, on their support group uh, and meetings were being held online. They were sufficient for me. I enjoyed the online Zoom meetings, but I know people who definitely need the connection in another way. So it was devastating for me to see people struggling so much and to see so many people that I know and love and care about relapse. Um, a relapse doesn't just affect the alcoholic, it affects everybody around them. So it's a big deal when an alcoholic goes out, an addict. Second, I get a lot of help from it. And third, I know that it helps people because I get the comments and the emails. So. All of that to say that I'm really making a promise that I'm going to be updating this more frequently. I'm just not going to commit to what more frequently means. So beyond all that, I wanted to kind of give a quick rundown of my story. Uh, I am an alcoholic. I've been sober for a little bit over three and a half years. I am originally from the Inland Empire um, area. Shout out to the IE. I grew up in Corona and Riverside areas. I hung out and actually this is well, growing up, I was honestly the 4.0 straight-A student. I was in, you know, um, AP classes, college level, um, and I graduated early. So my junior year, I got extremely depressed. I started to self-harm. I was cutting, actually practicing a lot of other dangerous behaviors. Like, I mean, I was just kind of all over the place. So I didn't have the words as a 17-year-old or 16-year-old to say what was wrong. Um, I do remember at one time my parents found my cuts on my arm and we had this big family meeting and it was really awkward and weird. To nobody's fault, like, it, they tried the best that they could, my parents, but it's not like they were really prepared to deal with super depressed, rambunctious child who all of her life had been the model student. My senior year, I did independent study, graduated early, and started hanging out with tweakers. <laughs> it was really easy for me to kind of hide my drinking amongst these tweakers because they didn't care. They didn't care. Math was pretty prevalent in the Inland Empire area. It was what everybody did, so me drinking didn't really seem like a big deal at all. Fast forward, I very quickly got my first and second DUIs um, in 2008, 2009, so I was in my early 20s. And uh, they didn't really mean anything because everybody I was hanging out with had DUIs. So what's the big deal? The thing started to get a little bit more tragic. I started losing some friends because of my behavior in my early 20s. I felt pretty lonely and isolated. From 25 to about 27, I ended up um, being hospitalized pretty frequently um, in the mental hospital uh, just for suicidal and homicidal ideation. Like I was just off, I was detached from reality. And add to that, that I was kind of seeing therapists, kind of not being really honest with them. I was, you know, mixing my pills with my alcohol and um, did coke. I did coke for like a solid year and then I had a really bad anxiety attack and I stopped. I'm not cut out to be a coke head, apparently. I don't know. Anyway, I very quickly after that then decided to just switch to wine. <laughs> I stopped drinking hard alcohol. Whiskey, I was a whiskey drinker. And I would drink vodka if I had to. And then I really liked gin. I was in a relationship with somebody who noted that my drinking was becoming pro problematic. And I really loved this guy. And so I took that into consideration. And my taking it into consideration meant I'm just going to stop drinking hard alcohol. That kind of slowed me down a little bit. I wasn't in a great place. He and I tried, because I thought he was, I thought he drank like I did. In retrospect, he was like a hard drinker with a big book would refer to as a hard drinker. But he was not an alcoholic. He never lost control to the point that I did. We eventually ended up separating. Um, we were both sober at the time. I think we had like six months sober. But I, it, the issue all laid within me because I was so restless and irritable and discontent. I was so depressed. I was anxious. Um, without alcohol in my life, like I, was, I didn't know who I was, which is a sad thing to say. Fast forward, you know, was living with my parents. I was kind of acting out in all these other ways. I became really obsessed with diet and nutrition. I lost a bunch of weight. Seeing multiple guys, I was just kind of trying to find fulfillment in all these ways that were unhealthy. Burning bridges all the way, all the way. Uh, eventually ended up meeting this guy who lived in San Diego, who was, I didn't know at the time, a heroin addict. 
But one really positive thing that came from that relationship is that he turned me on to this church. I have been a part of very steadily since 2013. I just remember feeling very compelled, like I had to get closer to this church. I just never, I would probably argue with you that God didn't exist. Um, and if he did, he really didn't like me or he really didn't care about you or me. Like something began to stir inside of me and I'm grateful for it, but it was just another reason to move to San Diego to be closer to this guy. This relationship with this guy was incredibly unstable. We were incredibly violent and abusive towards each other, um, verbally, mentally, physically. It was bad. Add to that that I was coming with my, you know, baggage of alcoholism. He had his baggage of heroin addiction and I had just this overwhelming insecurity and loneliness because I wasn't super, you know, I didn't know anybody here. Um, I had a lot of feelings of inferiority and I just didn't, you know, everybody here has money. I didn't have any money. <laughs> and we were constantly breaking up and getting back together, breaking up, getting back together. And it was just this chaos, this chaos spiral. Ultimately what ended up happening is I ended up getting a third DUI, uh, domestic violence. Uh, case against me and I ended up going to jail for three and a half months and then went to treatment. I fought, I fought, I would not plead guilty to anything until they guaranteed me that I would get treatment. When they finally agreed to that, I was like, fine, guilty, I'll go to treatment. And it was an all women's facility <laughs> and it was, there's really something about women being together that changed me completely. Um, it happened, it started in the jail and it kind of came to fruition in the treatment center. And it, it showed me that I, I needed to be about, around women. I needed to prioritize my relationships with women. Women helped save my life. The women that were placed in my life were not there just coincidentally. Like they, everyone that I crossed paths with had something to tell me that made sense to me and that spoke to me and changed my life ultimately. Terrified. I ended up going into a sober living in 2016. I relapsed in 2017. I then got sober um, after I had found out that one of my very close friends in sobriety died. It was heartbreaking for me and it still is. It really kind of snapped me <laughs> into like focus and I was like, what am I doing with my life right now? I knew that I could not do things any differently. Like I was going to drink every single minute. It was a battle to not drink. I was involved in AA at this time. I, I didn't like it and like the concept of it. I didn't really grasp it. I had a lot of my own agendas when I would go and I was in the middle of a workshop. I was going through this step that I was like finally like determined to try to get this down when I had relapsed. So I remember it was a Saturday. It was October 7th was the last time that I drank um, and I woke up from a blackout. I had been drinking that entire summer um, off and on and it was I had got, gotten hospitalized and that was after you know almost a year of sobriety that I had relapsed and I just couldn't get sober and and I remember fighting with God like I had actually completely renounced my religion at that time and I said I wasn't gonna be Christian anymore I didn't believe in God I was gonna try doing you know this whole law of attraction type of universe thing and I'm not talking shit on it if you believe what you want to believe it didn't it did not help me to keep me sober, to help me do things differently. And so after that, I ended up, I really had to humble myself and I got myself back into a sober living scene. And I have to say, I'm gonna make a whole different video about this later, um, that the way that I finally, I say AA and you're gonna have all your own ideas about what AA is, but, um, cause I did, cause I was forced to go to AA meetings for these stupid DUIs. And um, I hated them. I was always like the youngest, brownest girl even in the inland empire i was in meetings with crusty old white men and they were so gnarly and just like unhappy and i was like i do not want what they have they are miserable cranky old men and it just didn't none of it appealed to me um but when i was in san diego i got connected to this group called the big book awakening and it really did hit me in a different way um, but um, this way of recovery honestly had a deep and effective change in me. It really changed. Um, 
my inner peace and the actual serenity that everybody talks about, like I actually got to experience it. It was work. Um, it was a lot of step work actually. Oh, I don't have any of the stuff with me. But, um, you know, it was a very detailed way of going through the 12 steps. And I did it because I had no other option. I was either going to keep drinking, I was going to die, I was going to kill myself, or I was going to end up in jail for a really long time. Um, so it was really the only option that I had at the time because I just couldn't stay sober. I, because of that gift, I now feel like it's only a gift for me now to be able to share that experience. Now I have three and a half years sober and since then my life has changed pretty dramatically. Um, to begin with, I, whatever is going on like in the world, I have an extreme sense of peace and clarity in my life um, and a connectedness in a relationship to God that I've never had or experienced before. Um, and that I never even wanted or was interested in before. It has legitimately just improved every part of my life. Um, yes, I have a good job. I love my job. Um, I have my own place to live that I like love where I live. Um, I have two amazing little doggies. I have a great relationship with my parents and my sister. I have a solid group of friends. I am emotionally balanced and mentally balanced now. Um, I feel purpose in my life and happiness and actual contentedness and joy regardless of what the outside looks like. And when I don't, um, I have a solution for it now. Um, you know, and I know what it takes to get back into a balance. And uh, that's not to say that I haven't acted out in other ways, because I certainly have. I've acted out around food and men, shopping, oh, work, that's a big one. I still, like, my, my problems today are just so different than they were 10 years ago. Like, um, and by the way, I finished up all my third DUI stuff. I have my fully reinstated license and it was a lot of work and it was pretty, uh, oh God, when I think about it, I was talking to a friend about doing taxes the other day. I was like, oh my God, I remember having my paychecks garnished because I owed a lot of money, um, to a lot of collectors and, um, you know, debt collectors and to the government. And I just look back at the chaos that I had created in my life and I just, I'm grateful for it because now I can help people who have been in those situations, but I also never want to go back to that again. Um, and I'm grateful that I have a way to keep on this trajectory that God has for me. Um, and I hope that I can share a little bit more wisdom, I guess, um, in a way more succinct way than a 20 minute video about how I did that. So if you have any questions or suggestions for videos about sobriety and recovery, um, AA, mental health, um, I am not a doctor or a therapist by any, in any way, shape or form. Um, my sponsees have therapists. I tell them, get your therapist. But I can tell you what my experience has been with mental health stuff as well. Um, but overall, from somebody who was diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder, who was on a cocktail, I think I was on at least five medications, um, that who is now able to say that I'm not on any, it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I hope that you got something out of this video. I am going to do a series on how I went through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous through the Big Book Awakening. I strongly recommend that if you do want to get sober, to go to bbaworks.com, um, find a workshop, find a sponsor, start doing the work. Um, and I think you'll be, I know that you'll be satisfied with the results if you're really serious about it. So, um, thank you for watching this and actually I have a whole list of ideas here of all my, um, video ideas. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Bye.